Olariniru is famous in the world for its biodiversity. It has been declared a key biodiversity area and an important bird area by Nature Kenya. Kenya has been suffering for this for many years. Every conservation area is invaded by livestock. Livestock is uh, not just destroying the environment by creating erosion and the biodiversity as a result, but also polluting the water courses and by so doing, affecting the entire biodiversity. Because I have protected this vegetation for over 40 years. Olariniru is a key biodiversity area. And there is a lot of water here. Because the vegetation and the water, they go together. Olariniru is the watershed for the Great Rift Valley, lakes of Baringo, Bogoria, and, and uh, Lake 94, as they call it. By the sheer presence of the cattle in wildlife area, they are disturbing a balance. Because of the amount of buffaloes that we have here, who bring East Coast fever to the cattle, the illegal herders must use a pesticide in order to keep their cattle alive. And therefore, uh, they pollute the courses of water, they carry this uh, pesticide with them, and by extension, the vegetation is affected in, at large, the forests are affected. They talk about cattle like walking gold, because it is money that walks. But of course people who invest in livestock don't have the land for the livestock. There is going to be no future for the wildlife and the environment in this country. So where hundreds of thousands of livestock are invading wildlife space. The most important thing is also to remember that there will not be a live elephant was it not for the space for this elephant. That was unusually speared with a poison spear and it was surrounded by livestock. We lost over 200 elephants in the last few years. I stood on their carcasses. I smelled the death of those elephants. I saw the maggots. I saw the horror. The first elephant that we lost in this year, in January 2016, we got the tusks, 100 pounds, and I'm sure they will be burned to the rest. Ivory actually nobilifies the teeth. They should be called teeth, not ivory, I don't think. Ivory seems like a substance, like diamond, like gold something of value of some sort. There should be no value in the teeth of the elephant. It is only a sad reminder that once those teeth were on a live, majestic, symbolic, iconic animal, they walk Africa and is no longer there. Since the lifting of the 20 years moratorium on the sale of ivory, Kenya saw a beginning of poaching again. And here in Olariniru, which is the largest private conservancy in Kenya, situated on the edge of the Great Rift Valley, the hunting of elephants illegally instantly began. Poached elephants were found daily. And in 2009, Within a very short period of time, we lost 64 elephants. In some cases, we arrived before the poachers and we retrieved the ivory that we gave to the KWS. When the ivory will be burnt again, some of the tusks in that pyre are of elephants that lived and died in Olariniru. It's personal for me. Thank you.
I'm Kitili Mbathi, Director General of Kenya Wildlife Service, and welcome to Nairobi National Park. We are in the final process of um, our ivory burn. We are going to tally each of the tusks as they come out, take them down, and start building our pyre for the fireworks. Okay, good. Six, six. You go, you go. Eight. Eight. Ten. Ah, ten. Kenya is demonstrating through the burn that it believes that there is no intrinsic Two. value to ivory. Six. The only value in ivory is as tusks on the elephant. And what we are trying to do is um, stigmatize ivory, ivory jewelry, ivory trinkets, so that it plays a part in reducing the demand for ivory. Ultimately, we would like to see a total ban in the trade of ivory so our elephants have a better chance of surviving over the next generations. We will have uh, 10 towers for ivory and one tower for the rhino. We put it on the base on the ground. Yes. We put it standing up. Oh yeah. I feel very sad to see um, that so many elephants had to die. A lot of them through poachers. I think it just demonstrates that Kenya is very serious in its anti-poaching efforts, in its conservation efforts for the rhino and the elephant, and it is to encourage a movement to ban the trade, uh, global trade in ivory and rhino horn. The first ivory fire. Proud to carry, to be helping. Seven. What a childhood, yeah? This burn is a clear message to the world that Kenya will not tolerate illegal wildlife trade in any form. This is a massive amount of ivory, an extraordinary gesture of Kenya of leading the way in uh, ensuring that the world gets a measure strong and clear that there is no value to ivory. I think Kenya is very brave to do that and I think it is the right thing to do. Because burning something since the beginning of time is the significance of an end and a beginning, and a new beginning. A fire can be purified, a fire can be destructive and horrible. But there is something in the fire which is definitive. Going up in smoke means destroying forever something that sometimes should be destroyed. There is no beauty in a tooth. It should not become an item that people covet to own and to, and to show off and to display on their mantelpieces like beautiful objects. There is nothing beautiful about it. And people forget when they go into shops in Beijing or in Thailand. People do not make a connection between the object they have on their mantelpieces or on the table in the agony, the horror, the fear, the danger, the death. The ivory that belongs to a live elephant should only be on the elephant.
my son died at 17, I decided to celebrate his memory with an event that would people together and that he would have loved. As a young man growing up, he loved action, he loved people, he loved the nature of Africa. This was my son. I do all this with his memory. Putting people together across so many tribes who have been fighting was an idea that came to me in 2008 after Kenya was troubled by the post-election violence. And I changed the memorial to my son that was before a meeting of people competing and having fun into something that meant peace and reconciliation in addition to being a memorial. Every year, on the edge of the Great Rift Valley, I put nine tribes together. Some of those were been in conflict over the past few years, and particularly prior to election. We are, we are here as purposely of peace. Yeah, it's interaction between the Kokot, the Sangur, Tugans and other tribes which are available in these games today. Mungu wa upendo na amani. Naomba unifanye niwe chombo cha amani yako duniani. Palipo na chuki nilete upendo. Mimi napenda shere wapi watu na fry yo shere. Kwa hivyo asante sana mimi ni akila pali. Sasa mimi iko hapa naombea makina na bwana yake na mama yake asinde msuri kwa wakati wa huu This is all about the Laikipia Highland Games. We are of the Highlands of Laikipia and these are games and these games will soon begin. It is difficult to fight and to kill someone that you have seen, with whom you have shaken hands, having competed fairly. The value of sport as a way of promoting peace are known and ancient, as ancient as nature in the Great Rift Valley. By putting young men together, running, jumping, throwing the javelin, throwing a special stick in traditional tribal games, competing. Is contributing to peace and put people together in daylight, coming from far and wide along our boundaries of La Equipia Nature Conservancy, Olari Nero, the place of water, that otherwise will never have a chance to find an opportunity to meet. <laughs> we are running some races like 400 meters, 100 meters, 200 meters, and 800 meters. And also we are going to jump. We have some jumps that are going to jump high. In fact, we are just aiming to, to win. And we will be very happy when we win. Jumbo, this is the district commissioner. I see. He's a good, he's a good man, as you can see. He has the right t-shirt. Oh, yes. I belong to you people. Thank you. This, um, this part of the country is very special because you have uh, different communities living here. 
and um, because of uh, different things, because of uh, what I would call misinformation, uh, sometimes there is conflict here and there, and also because of uh, issues like coaching. So this occasion gives uh, the young people a chance to come together and uh, meet in a different setting, and I think that fosters peace. This is a private occasion, privately put together with our own strength, with our own people. So, the Kamani Chaku Chapa Moja, Kamani Kolmoja, Kolmoja, Alavu, Munafiga Tete. It was their party. And the ones who visited realized that. There were thousands of people. They walked there, they drove there, and some flew there. The people who came there are all friends. No politician was involved nor invited. Per se. No tribe is bad or good, per se. No young man likes to kill another. It is only incitement that creates the problem, and incitement to invade private land with livestock is also a problem. It was a very moving tribute to see people who voluntarily came to La Renero to this occasion. And to honor us. Because we kept the grass and we kept the water and we kept the trees and the only forest that remains in Lake Ipia, which is relic and pristine. I'm proud of that. But I think the most important message is to allow so many people to see it, to witness it, to feel inspired by it. School children, ladies, men, women of all ages, of all backgrounds. I think it was fantastic. There are moments in the life of people which are turning points. In mine, this was the death of my son at 17, so soon after the death of my husband in an accident. And on the grave of both, I swore to dedicate my life and my resources to making a difference for the chunk of Africa where they lived, which they loved, and where I continue to live, and which I love. It can be done. We don't need to wait for new laws to be endorsed. We are the law. If we change ourselves, the world is changed. If we change our attitude towards the environment and towards each other, there is no need for war or conflict. It can be done. We've done it in Olarinero.
There is nothing that people can do to scare or to make me lose heart. Because by the, by the end of the day, and life will go on. And after all, they will not be able to change the shape of the hills. Thank <laughs> you.